Aquaman Power Wave is the new for 2020. Mm. New for 2021. Mm. New for 2022. Mm. New for 2023. The new for 2023 mock power splash at Six Flags over Texas. This ride was delayed for three years, but it finally opened. Six Flags loves to clone rides across their parks, and this ride seems perfect for that. It occupies a slender footprint, and many parks in the chain have aging or retired water rides. Now those who've experienced Aquaman seem to love it. But this coaster's been a bit tricky to ride thus far. It has had a lot of mechanical issues. In this video, I will review Aquaman Power Wave and explain how likely we are to see more at Six Flags Parks. The prototype mock Power Splash was Pulsar. This coaster opened at Wallaby, Belgium in 2016. I rode this coaster last summer and already made a review on that ride. In short, the ride experience on Aquaman is identical, and I believe that would be the case for all five Power Splashes currently in operation. They all feature identical stats and layouts. Mach has shown plans for variations in the base layout that can even include inversions, but none of those have been built yet. Aquaman Power Wave would be the first Power Splash in the Western Hemisphere. The ride replaced Aquaman Splashdown, a Shoot the Shoots ride. For the sake of simplicity, every mention of Aquaman from this point forwards refers to the new ride. This ride was originally supposed to open in 2020, but was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. People thought it would be postponed until 2021 like what Six Flags Great Adventure did with Jersey Devil Coaster. But over Texas announced that Aquaman would not open until 2022. The power splashes are shuttle coasters, meaning only one boat can be on the course at once. To increase capacity, the ride can operate with a turntable. This means one train can load while the other is on the course. This is what Pulsar opened with. Aquaman was slated to open without a turntable. This seemed like a questionable decision for a park as large as over Texas. The park ultimately decided to add a turntable, but this delayed the coaster an extra year until 2023. While it was annoying to see the ride sitting idle for a few years, I think it was the right decision to increase the capacity. I visited the park on a cooler day, yet Aquaman was still pulling in crowds, so I can only imagine how many people will queue up for this ride on a hot day. The biggest issue with this coaster thus far has been the reliability. I spent parts of three days at Over Texas, and Aquaman seemed to be closed more than was open. Most of the issues seemed to be related to the turntable. I'm not sure if it's related to the turntable being added late in the design process, but I really hope this can be resolved. I have heard Pulsar can have some technical issues here and there, but nothing nearly as frequent as Aquaman has had over the past week. If Aquaman can overcome its early technical issues, I see this being the next ride Six Flags clones. It makes too much sense. Along with the early popularity, there are five reasons. One, many Six Flags parks have either removed or closed their water rides. This has caused the remaining ones to get slammed on a summer day due to the lack of options. Two, the ride already requires less staff to operate than their other water rides. The secure restraints prevent employees from having to be stationed throughout the layout, which you see in a River Rapids ride or log flume. Three, the narrow footprint could work at many Six Flags parks. Four, the water level can be adjusted to modify the splash height depending on the weather. This can make it appealing in any season. Over Texas was running Aquaman with temperatures in the 40s, and people were happily climbing aboard. But then again, it wasn't soaking most guests. Five, this chain loves marketability. Six Flags can easily advertise these coasters as the region's first launch water coaster. But back to Aquaman. This ride has a major presence in and around the park. The sea-colored spikes can be seen from outside the park. Then the ride is mesmerizing to watch. And I like how you can walk all around it to get every possible angle. The colossal splash is a spectacle. Most guests could not believe how gargantuan it was. Watch out for those splash zones. They'll drench you. And you also have a big Aquaman statue running along the queue line. I'm glad this DC character isn't just a laughing stock anymore. Aquaman is arguably the closest coaster to the main entrance of Six Flags over Texas. Combined with the ride's newness, I expect this ride to quickly build up a weight this year, especially in the hotter summer months. Therefore, 
If you aren't one of the first people in line, I would expect this ride to carry a lengthy wait for much of the day. There are two possible ways to skip the line. One is the paid flash pass. Two is the single rider line. This is a great time saver if there aren't many people using it when you walk by. Just keep checking. There were times it was a walk-on last week. There were other times I think the wait would have been longer than the standby queue. At the end of the queue, you are assigned a row. I believe the employees are willing to accommodate row requests. I like the back row best by a slim margin because you go higher up the final spike. If you want the driest experience, I would make sure to avoid the front row. Those seats get the wettest by far. The side seats get a bit wetter than the inside ones, but that difference is less extreme. But the key thing to note with Aquaman is that your shoes are safe. The worst part about any water ride is getting your shoes soaked and then having to slosh around the park. It's the perfect recipe for blisters. The power splashes are brilliantly designed so your feet will stay dry. Only your upper body will get wet. That is just how I want it. The loose article situation is a bit unique with this ride. Before you board, you put any loose articles on a cart. An employee then has to wheel it out of the station and up the exit ramp where it'll be waiting for you. Each boat has five rows of four. Once seated, the restraints automatically lower. Mach has done this on several of their newer coasters to expedite the boarding process. Dispatches on Aquaman were very fast. The next boat was usually ready to go the second the other one returned to the turntable. Technical issues were the only thing that would slow the crew down. The lap bar restraints are beefy, but they're quite comfortable so I have no issue with them. Once dispatched, you rotate 180 degrees out of the station onto the main layout. After a brief pause, the first launch kicks in. This ride uses LSM launches. This one sends you backwards over a bunny hill. The first launch is pretty mild, and you have too little speed to get any airtime over the hump. You then coast over a long straightaway. Then you partially climb up the spike. Not high enough to get any airtime or weightlessness this time around. You then head forwards. You meekly pass over the bunny hill once again, and then launch 2 kicks in. It has some kick to it as you accelerate to an appreciable speed. You then head up a vertical spike. When you stall out this time around, you get some solid weightlessness. Now this is where things get really wild. The third launch kicks in. It is a punchy one. Since you're traveling backwards, the sudden speed boost partially folds you over the lap bar. It is a really good launch for a mock coaster. And that's not all. This time, you rocket over that bunny hill. This gives everyone some nice sustained floater air time. You then climb the far spike and fall, reaching your max height of 146 feet or 45 meters. This is massive for a water ride. It starts off as weightlessness, but something weird happens atop the tower. There's this hump at the top. It doesn't seem like it would do too much, but it really changes the dynamics of the resultant drop. The weightlessness morphs into good sustained floater airtime. It's a really fun drop that feels fundamentally different than other spikes. While this occurs, the straightaway down below was filled with water. During the spike, you have the option to take in the view of the park or watch the reservoir fill up. I recommend doing the latter because it's a sight you cannot get on any other water ride, well, outside of the power splashes. Now it's time for the splash. It is huge. It is both tall and wide. It covers a ton of area. That is why it's impressive how you don't come off this ride soaked. Unless you ride up front. Everyone outside of the front row gets comfortably refreshed. The splash doubles as a brake and takes away most of your speed. You then gently coast over the bunny hill and come to a stop on the turntable. Once the second boat is ready to go, you are rotated back into the station ending the ride. This coaster has just 709 feet or 216 meters of track, but the ride feels way longer and more complete because of the extended swing launch sequence. You effectively travel that track length three to four times. The last thing I want to touch on is the ride's smoothness. Some mock water coasters can shuffle on the coaster bits, but Aquaman is very smooth. It probably helps there are no turns. Usually it's the helixes and swooping drops that have a shake in these rides. So what would I rate Aquaman? I would give this launched water coaster a 7 out of 10. 
This is a good ride. It offers a far more thrilling experience than your traditional water rides. It has three launches with the last one being arguably the best launch Mach has ever produced. Then there are several spots of airtime, most notably on the spikes. The layout is simple, but it does everything it sets out to accomplish and it's an enjoyable experience. I would take this over most log flumes, rapids rides, and shoot the shoots, which is why I have no issue if Six Flags ultimately clones this across their chain. Their parks could use more good water rides. So those are my thoughts on Aquaman Power Wave at Six Flags over Texas. What are your thoughts on this mock power splash? Do you think it was worth the wait? Also, do you think Six Flags will clone this ride across their parks? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.